dolphins have hair, I think. I just think it's really fine. It's like really... They... <laughs> <laughs> there's little... Those little fish that are that are, that are on them, like they eat the little hairs. I think dolphins have... I think because they have Remora? to. One what? time in... No. Uh, in little fish. The 11th grade, the Spanish teacher was bored and or was whatever she didn't care i mean because i i like i i sympathize with her like i would if i was a teacher i would exclusively play films all day that would be my total mo but anyway spanish teacher plays and it was like a documentary about um i can't remember somewhere in south america where they speak spanish and that is on the coast and it was very just typical school boring documentary like this is their gross national product and then they went and talked about a uh, fisherman off the coast and it was pretty boring, but I was still watching cause it was TV. And then <laughs> one of, <laughs> one of the fishermen uh, and it's all subtitled says about how they occasionally catch dolphins in their nets. Oh, that's kind of sad. And then he says that sometimes they pull up the dolphins, and if it's a female dolphin, the men have a little fun with them before they throw them back in. <laughs> and that marks the most interesting thing I ever learned in school ever. <laughs> I, I, and I was, I was like one of the only people paying attention, just I guess because I like TV, and I was kind of like looking around, like, does any, did anyone follow that? Can we rewind that? Does that? And uh, there was like maybe one other person that, you know, everyone else was just, you know, trading notes about uh, what what boys they liked. I was not on the list. <laughs> and uh, but me, me and whoever else in the room locked eyes and, and, and our lives have been changed forever on that day, knowing that there are dolphins out there that... There needs to be an SVU on, on <laughs> dolphin, does. you know. Dolphin, ripped. The, you know. <laughs> this CSI's. episode ripped from an old documentary. <laughs> SeaWorld's efforts to get back in the the public conversation with some sort of detective show. You know, that's not that's the, the first S. time that would be the S in this yes. SVU. <laughs> SeaWorld. I've, I've heard that story from you before, Mike. And I have to tell you, my entire life has been changed because I can't see a dolphin. Swear to God, every if I see a dolphin on TV, if I see a dolphin in an aquarium, the first thing I think of is that horrible story <laughs> <laughs> about fishermen yeah. raping dolphins every also, single time. I also have to add, like the 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 guy telling the story, like looks into the camera and like gives like a manic giggle when he's telling it, and he's missing most of his teeth. He's got way more he's got way more not teeth than teeth and then the teeth that he does have are kind of maize colored but you know the the you know the colored colored corn um yeah yeah it was a rough that was a rough day to to go on do you do well here's here's my question for for you uh does that really happen I don't know how often it's happening in or still happening down in in South America I I, I've been wanting to take a uh, a community college Spanish class in hopes to find out what's going on in that world. Because that's probably the only way I'm ever going to know is if I continue taking Spanish at a collegiate or community collegiate level. Right. level. Just every day you're hoping they wheel out a TV card. I, and I just keep <laughs> learning. Yeah. movie one more time. I just keep learning all these... <laughs> Fucking verb combi- combinations, conjugations, When's combination conjugations. Damn it! Yeah, every day, every day they come in and they go like, "Today we're working on gerunds." <laughs> Fuck! We're sentence diagramming. God damn it! <laughs> Try, just you drop little hints about your interest in learning more sea life vocabulary and <laughs> yeah. want to hear it from native speakers or just just hoping that someday it all clicks and somebody wheels in the how do you say bottle nosed in spanish <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe. With news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Weeby, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Welcome to the International News Service, the only news source you need. Uh, our first story comes from the BBC, and uh, it is titled, Husband on Leash Breached Quebec's Curfew Law. Corn song. <laughs> Corn song, right? <laughs> Feeling like a freak on a leash in Canada. <laughs> so you got to sing it with a French accent. Accent. Feeling like a freak on a leash. <laughs> they speak French in Quebec. Do they? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I I didn't know that. They also have shitty health care because everybody gets it. <laughs> it's a real shithole to live in. The lines are like ten miles long. Lines are ten miles long, and uh, when you when you say like oh, I want to get the flu vaccine, they go okay, and they just punch you in the face. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, they want you to die of measles, so they don't have to treat you for what's really going on. Yeah. So when you get the sugars. And you need to go in there because you had too much sugary, what's that gravy and French fry thing they eat? Uh, poutine. Poutine. That's, yeah. That's probably sweet. They probably put sugar on that. They, it's they cold there. You got to eat a lot of yeah. sugar. They, they give, hibernate, right? You know the number one deaths in Canada are from dropsy? <laughs> dropsy. <laughs> Not... <laughs> There's more deaths from, I mean, that's something that our healthcare has taken care of a right. long time ago because... We're just better. We're just we're just better than those right. fucking shitty lumberjacks. <laughs> right. Anyway, what's what what's up with this cucked this cucked son of a bitch? <laughs> so in order to fight coronavirus, uh the Canadian province of Quebec imposed a nightly curfew mm. between eight PM and five AM. Uh one of the exceptions to the curfew is that you can uh walk your pet close to your home. So the the first night of the curfew was Saturday at 8 p.m. And by approximately 9 p.m. on Saturday, uh, police in the city of Sherbrooke observed a woman walking her husband on a leash. When approached by police, she reportedly told uh, police she was just out, quote, walking her dog. Police told told, uh, the newspaper that the couple, quote, did not cooperate with police at all. Could you say that with a, a French accent, please? Yeah. They did not cooperate with the police at all. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, this is how the left does it, right? Mm-hmm. This is this is just kink shaming. This is they're they're embarrassing people who have a loving relationship. I'm sure they live together. They weren't around anybody else. This is this is classic left wing shutting down of the freedoms that Canadians have enjoyed for years. Does it does the does the article say if he has nipple rings? Because everything I'm hearing leads me to believe he has twelve gauge nipple rings. I I searched the internet for a picture of this, and unfortunately, there were no photographs. Oh, I can send you some pictures. <laughs> I've got some pictures. I don't. They're not. I'm not sending you a link. I'm sending you things from my hard drive. No, that's, that's right your... now. I will send them. That'll show them. Uh, so is this the winter time that this happened? Yeah, this, this happened last Saturday. Okay, so it's cold, right? It's colder yeah. in Canada than it is here, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, I like you, Mike, at first like to imagine somebody wearing some sort of leather harness with nipple rings. But also, I like the idea of it being two people wearing very puffy down coats with yeah. just a leash. Like everything else, very normal. Like maybe a baby blue ski coat and some red ski pants and then a leash. Well, it just clearly demonstrates that people uh, look down on dogs because somehow we can celebrate a dog doing things that are things are you know traditionally reserved for human beings. But should a human being want to want to take part in those things that we associate with dogs, all of a sudden it's it's it should be laughed at. I mean, that's yeah. that's fucking bullshit. It's it is like I say, this is just more of the same from the Canadian left, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the French Canadian left. The it's worst. typical, yeah. Uh, America, strong. Dog country. Canada, mm-hmm. weak. 
cat country. Right. But remember Arsenio? Remember the dog pound? Yeah. yeah. Barking? That was okay. <laughs> why, why is that okay, Mike? Huh? Why yeah. is that okay? These people over there, these people are people that think that they work at a CNC music factory. <laughs> That's the dog pound. Ooh, ooh, right. Ooh, ooh. Right. So what I hear you guys saying, though, was is is if it's okay for the husband to be a dog, how would you feel if it turned out a dog was her husband? I'm fine with it. I'm fine. That's great. Okay. I mean, as long as the dog's consent, as long as it's like a, a you know, like a purebred. <laughs> right. As long as it's, if you it's, know, if like... If it's registered... The reg- yeah, right. AKC registered. As long as, as long as the AKC is good with it, right. A, 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 an acronym that I know exactly what it means. As <laughs> long as the AKC <laughs> is good with it, the American Kennel Company, <laughs> right? That's very close. Uh, you know, as long as it, as 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 they have papers that can be checked out, and um, as long as as long as the dog has a pure gait. Uh, then I, I don't see anything wrong with a person marrying a dog, male right. or female. As long as the dog's of age, obviously, in dog years. So the dog needs to be one and a half or two. I don't know what the formula What's the formula? I thought it was seven, seven years. Seven. I don't know. They say it's seven <laughs> years, but they hit maturity real soon. <laughs> All right. That's, yeah. That dog was. I don't know. That dog it's was weird. Old, 13. Maybe. I mean, that dog was coming on to me. I, the dog looked 18, I swear. I guess three. I don't know. <laughs> three. It's weird because, like, they say it's seven years, but then you have dogs that live to be, you know, 16, 17, right. 18. So the, the couple was fined uh, about. Twelve hundred twelve dollars each, uh, as a result of uh, wait, this. that is that is what? insane. Hold on, I need to. I need to. What, what kind of Canadian bullshit is it to throw in that extra twelve dollars? <laughs> well, no, that's that's in American money. So I think they were charged. I think it was like seventeen fifty or something. Uh, Our dollars got to be stronger than theirs because we, as a people, are. <laughs> How- yeah, so this is a million dollars each in Canadian money. It's twelve hundred twelve dollars in American money. Well, that's what happens when you give everybody health care. Your dollar's not worth anything anymore. Yep. There you go. I also I also like that it's it works out to you know about what what people hope to get in a stimulus check. So if, if you're just looking to blow <laughs> yeah. that money, maybe that's what it was. Like, yeah, we, we don't, this is just bound money. Let's go let's go pray it around. Yeah, let's have fun. Let's have some fun. Let's get out of the house. Get the leash. Walkies, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, I hope at one point she, I hope he I hope he tried to run away from the cops and she just looked at the cops and goes, He's got the zoomies. <laughs> got the zoomies. So our next story comes from the New York Post. Hmm. And the title is Man injects magic mushrooms into blood, resulting in organ failure. A 30-year-old man in Nebraska was recently admitted to the ER with reports of vomiting blood, diarrhea, nausea, uh, jaundiced appearance, confusion, and fatigue, and he could not speak coherently to doctors. Wait, do I have? Did I inject mushrooms? Because that that describes me most of the time. <laughs> Sounds like the new Pepto jingle. That'd be yeah. Uh, tests revealed that his liver had been injured by infiltrating fungi, and his kidney his kidneys were not fully functioning. Doctors later learned the man had stopped taking medication for mental illness, and instead he decided to s- try self-medicating by using psilocybin mushrooms. I know, I know a guy like that. <laughs> <clears throat> but the thing is, rather than eat them, he made up a solution and injected them into his blood, where the fungi literally started growing. Hot, what, ew, mushrooms are gross. I mean, like, I like, I like, I like eating them. And especially when they're magical, but uh, they're fucking gross. Like to look at them, like where they grow. Ugh, it's so, so what does, what does that look like? Where did it grow out of? I mean, I think, I think it just was like, like the, uh, the spores from the mushrooms just replicated in his, his uh, system, but they were uh, specifically like in his liver and kidneys. Was this a Canadian hospital? Cause I, I find this very hard. Yeah, to that's Yeah. This seems. I'm sorry. I, I hate to. I hate to. To distrust the information you're bringing us, Kevin. Uh, and I know this is about 
about getting to the truth of some of this stuff, but I just don't think that mushrooms can live in a, in the bloodstream. I don't think that's true. Would you like to maybe, try this as a scientific experiment? No, no, I, I would not. I just, so he, I started growing. I mean, do you want to get high though? I'm sure. Uh, I mean, I think he was like, you know, like it said, like he couldn't even speak coherently. So he was speaking. I think he was just on another plane of existence and also his body couldn't handle that. So when they say started growing, that would, that would mean that they took his blood once found mushrooms and then waited a while to see if more mushrooms were growing in his blood, which that, does not make sense to me. Like how do you know they're right. growing? It kind of sounds right, though, because he spent 22 days in the hospital attached to both a ventilator and a machine that could filter toxins from his blood. So, yeah, I mean, I think at a certain point they're like, oh, yeah, we got more mushroom toxins today than yesterday. Did he inject these mushrooms or he just ate them? He injected He made a tea out of them and he put them in a syringe and injected them. I don't know uh, if it was an arm injection or a butt injection or where... Specifically, he injected them. But what yeah. other places might it have been? Yeah, tell us what other body uh, parts. Uh, maybe but... behind his eyes, between okay. his toes. Keep going. Leg. Get to get to the good parts. Yeah. Oh, you you mean his penis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Imagine that. Think about that. No, mm. this this wasn't Harvey Weinstein. We're talking about. Did he inject mushrooms into his penis? He he had some kind of like. Uh, boner drug that he would make his assistant who is a who is a lady inject directly into his penis boner drug is funny <laughs> every time somebody says <laughs> they released him from the hospital and he was sent home with antibiotics and antifungal medication so uh just you know for the record psilocybin mushrooms uh, have shown legitimate therapeutic uses for treating addiction depression anxiety and ptsd but try to consume them like a normal person you know, well, they've mouth. also shown uh, they've also shown improvements in partying. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I only I only take St. John's warts and, and warts, St. John's wart and, and golden seal and other. Those are my nonsense treatments. Do you, of in, choice. Do you inject them directly into your bloodstream? <laughs> yes. I slather CBD oil all over myself. Uh, that pretty much cures everything I have going on. And then I inject. St. John's wart in one arm, yeah. golden seal in the other. And then I just rub my testicles and in, in some yeah. kind of echinacea paste. <laughs> I've taken to snorting centrum silver. <laughs> right. right. I've heard I've heard that's that cures quite a few things. Yeah. Yeah. Jaundiced appearances. That's what I want. That's blood. the main deal, is I don't want to look jaundiced anymore. And uh and I I don't want to get dropsy again. <laughs> Man, one time's enough, right? Well, the uh, four times would be enough, you know? Is it called dropsy because you have a hard time using your fingers to hold on? I mean, like, it, oh, I've got the dropsies. Is yeah, that the- that's why you can't, you can't lift stuff good. Uh, I'm trying to bring in uh, bags from the grocery store and I drop them. Mm. Uh, that's embarrassing. It's, it's no good. It is embarrassing. And emasculating. That's rough. Yeah. I have to go turn around and go, well, go right back to the grocery store and buy another another birthday cake. Another 10 cartons of eggs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you buy your own birthday cake? Well, I just get, I will get one every couple of weeks and uh, I, I, I like the way birthday cakes taste and they will only they'll only sell them to you if you get somebody's birthday inscribed. So I just, uh, I get, I just make up names for the most part. Well, they only come with four corner pieces. And after that, it's just garbage, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just ate, <laughs> ate the four corner pieces and then I, I give the rest to homeless people. I like drive oh, up so, and I go, here, you want so some nice. Well, I kind of drop it right before they get close <laughs> to picking it up. <laughs> And I go, live your fair share, go to Canada. They'll right. feed you this in Canada because I'm trying to get them to move out of my town. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> like looking at them. I don't like <laughs> to think about things like that when I'm going to H-E-B for the fifth time that day. Right. It's, well, it's funny to, to tell homeless people to move. Typically, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that. I think that implies that they've got 
a place that they're going to move from. You just want them to go. Just get just go to Canada. Get they'll here. They'll take care of you there. Right. You'll get all the you'll get all the poutine, cake, and healthcare you want. That's right. Entirely funded from exorbitant fines from people just from, hanging from out. dog walks from dog you know, walkers you know it's the funniest thing though uh you know that rapper cardi b i'm sure the three of you are very familiar with cardi b <laughs> sure, and then you're sure. all big fans but uh one time that stupid uh blonde conservative uh c-word woman uh tommy loren said something and just uh, on twitter and cardi b just <laughs> just replied back I will dog walk you, bitch. <laughs> and it's like the it's the coolest, toughest thing you could say to someone. I've ne- I've never heard that before. It's probably something like that, uh, you know, a, like a hip hop term that I just never heard before. But like, um, man, that's dope. <laughs> I will I will dog walk you, bitch. No, I don't know what that means, though, Mike. I I, I just it's cool. All right. We can look it up in Urban Dictionary <laughs> no, right no, now. I, I believe you. I think it's I Urban think you, Dictionary.com right now. But I, I I think your conclusion that it's not meant to be positive. It's is, not. We I can don't, all agree. That that's, yeah. Who's Tony Loren? Ugh, she's this awful uh, blonde, like ridiculous, like just hyper bleach blonde um, woman. She started out pretty young and like tried to be like a model entertainer entertainer person and failed to meet immediately and then realized that uh there is a, an easy grift in being an entertainment that caters to the hardcore right wing and uh just kind of went down that path where she just gives very you know tucker carlson-esque diatribes but through a millennial blonde sort of point of view yeah, she's just awful, and I hope I hope she gets. I hope fucking I hope mushrooms start growing in her <laughs> liver. Right. And, but no matter what, as long as it culminates in her getting dog walked by someone I, <laughs> by Cardi B, yeah, for it's, sure. That's right. So is she an entertaining? Like she's going to end up in Branson someday, or no? No, she's just like a conservative. I mean, that's her grift. Is she's like the conservative you know pond and it's it, it's that classic thing where she just you know right just constantly contradict you know just conservative voices are being silenced i'm gonna complain about how silenced my voice is from my fucking youtube page that gets you know a couple hundred thousand views every week by other idiots who complain about being silenced when they have four networks that exclusively put content to them you know what i like i like 70s softcore porn movies but they're really hard for me to watch (laughs) why is my voice being silenced (laughs) i want to watch emmanuel have softcore sex with three dudes in bangkok but it's not easy to find i'm silenced (laughs) why are 70s softcore pornography first being silenced are we going to get back to the news, please? Okay. Yeah, let's get back to the news. So our next story comes from uh, Forbes, Forbes magazine, and the title is Microsoft Could Bring You Back from the Dead as a Chatbot. 5G. So uh, <laughs> that's, what we're, that's, why we're, that's what we're fighting against. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Microsoft recently filed a patent for training chatbots by using... Uh, images, quote, images, voice data, social media posts, electronic messages, and written letters in order to build the profile of a person. Uh, the patent states this data may be used to train a chatbot to converse and interact in the personality of a specific person. Uh, the chatbot... Are you sure this is a Forbes story and not the Wikipedia for Lawnmower Man? <laughs> Was Pierce Brosnan in... in- we now that's Jeff Fahey, who who vaguely resembles. Yeah, I think Pierce Brosnan may have been the scientist in that, though. Oh, uh, maybe he was. He, I, I remember Jeff Fahey, and Jeff Fahey, your boy, 
M Dub here got to party with him at the beauty bar one time in Austin, no Texas. Me and Fahey partying down, and uh, and then and Ian McDougal was there. And Ian got really drunk and kept saying to him, "Fahey, you so quay." <laughs> <laughs> But Jeff Fahey was super cool. He was uh, he was he's also the guy who played Lapidus on Lost, and um, he uh, he once he was he got super lit, and he told me a story about James Coburn. He was like best buds with James Coburn before he died, which is very cool. Nice. But at one point, uh, <laughs> Jeff Fahey, a drunk Jeff Fahey, looks at me and goes, "It's like I always say, the circus don't stop for one monkey. Sometimes you're the circus." Sometimes you're the monkey. <laughs> that, that, and that concludes my everything I have to say about Jeff Fahey. <laughs> uh, the chatbot wouldn't just replicate the way a person types. The patent also says, quote, a voice font of the specific person may be generated using recordings and sound data. So it could literally speak like that person. But there's more. A 3D model of the specific person may be generated using images, depth information, and or data associated with that specific person. So they can make a chatbot that looked and talked like that person. Uh, this could be used for anyone from a private person, a celebrity like Jeff Fahey, a, a historical figure, living or dead, fictional or real. That's the thing. So the patent uh, allows you to train your chatbot. It can continue as you after death. So you could, you know, alter the nose, make it a little bit smarter, you know, take, take well, off 10 I, that, pounds. That's not possible on my end, but the second thing, continue. Uh, if the chatbot doesn't have enough data to provide an answer on a specific topic... Uh, crowdsourced conversation data can be used like uh, just like the way we could use Wikipedia to learn about Jeff Hayhe and then talk about it. I hate to interrupt, but I think I've already seen this at Six Flags in the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> Isn't that what this is? I mean, I've yeah, seen he- I've seen George Washington. I've seen uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln. They told me about the formation of this great land and it was it looked just like them. Their Bill voices. Clinton. Yeah. I mean, Lincoln sounded exactly like himself. Yeah, but did you have a conversation with Lincoln? Could you say, hey, Abraham Lincoln, what do you think about slavery? Yeah, he goes, it's, it, is, it is no good. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a really good Lincoln impersonation. <laughs> I know. It's weird how much Lincoln sounds like Bill Clinton. <laughs> 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 right. Well, they they say that was the key to Clinton winning office. Was that's that's kind of yeah, kind of what his deal. Mistook him for Lincoln. They remember you know how that, much they love Lincoln. That both of them played the saxophone. No, I didn't actually. Yeah, <laughs> they both were into the saxophone. The weirdest part about this for me is that there's a there's an option for the chatbot to know it's imitating a dead person. So you might be able to ask them how they died or how they would feel about something if they'd lived to see it. So, you know, in my particular case, my dad's chat bot could, uh, my dad could tell me he's disappointed, but then he could also program his chat bot so that even after he's dead, he can still tell me he's disappointed. It's quite a feature. <laughs> don't, don't want you to get an uppity. They got yeah, that's right. Dad, are you I'm, proud of me now? No, son. I'm no, still son. disappointed. Well, I'm troubled that this implies that there's not life after death, right? Because why would you, why would you have to know that you're imitating someone to be able to keep speaking after that person was dead? Because that person's still with us. They're just up in heaven. So they can speak to us from there. Right. I mean, I just, that just seems like a, a roundabout way for Microsoft to attack Christianity to me. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. their number one goal is it's, always, it's, Always been their number one goal. Give away their fortune to people on the internet and yep. debunk, destroy they want to. They want microchips to track us, mm-hmm. and they don't want us to go to church. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, hey, because anytime you're spending time in church, that's time that you're not spending on the internet, which is what they want. Mm-hmm. 
because that's how they get all their money. Uh, for now, this is just a patent application. Microsoft doesn't have a working prototype yet. Bullshit. And bull- they do. <laughs> They've got also- a warehouse full of these. <laughs> they wouldn't have made a movie software? about it called Lawnmower Man 20, like 20 years ago. Right. They didn't already know what they were doing. They probably had. They probably shut down after that just so people would forget that they had warehouses full of people. I'm going to call them people droids. I don't know if there's a word for for a machine that is like a person. So I'm going to call it people droid. Mm, I like is that. It. Okay, people droid. Probably patented it by Bill Gates. But God. yeah, I, I would like to give you guys an example of uh, what this might be like. So pretend. This is the worst case scenario, but something has happened to me and I am no longer on this earth. I, you know, I, I was uh, fighting uh, for your freedoms on a covert op uh, fighting ninjas in Japan. And hmm. I am no longer with us. This is very hypothetical. I don't want you to get too like, don't cry. So this is, I'm still here. But let's pretend uh, alternate world uh, got kill- killed uh, fighting ninjas in uh, off the coast of uh, Taiwan, Japan, and I'm now a chatbot. So pretend you guys are just hanging out, and I will be a chatbot. This is what it would be like. Hey, just before we start, Mike, can we call it a people droid just so I know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I, yeah, I'm a people droid. Okay. Uh, what's going on? Sir or ma'am? I am having fun as usual, watching my favorite things. Movies your- about Jeff Fahey and dog walking Cardi B songs. Uh, it's this is weird. It's now Kevin, I'm talking to you. Yes. I miss you all so much. <laughs> People droid. I'm, I need you to, to stand down for a second. I'm going to talk to Kevin. Kevin, this is weird. Stand down and stand by. <laughs> I will. Wait a minute. I feel like there's maybe something more to this. It's, it's remarkable how much like this sounds like Mike, <laughs> but I can tell it's not quite, you know, it's just not quite there. Some people call that the uncanny valley. Mike <laughs> also liked a thing called the uncanny X-Men. He was a ch- child. I wonder if he knows where, where Mike's valuable and rare collection of X-Men number ones can be, can be located. Mike never had an X-Men number one. He did have three Doctor Strange that were 9.0 percentage <laughs> ratings. However, they are encased and behind him on the wall there. There there and there <laughs> oh this is well this is this is this is freaking me out I t- i'll tell you that much people droids are this is what the future will be like <laughs> okay i'm back guys like, that was <laughs> that was honestly that was too real for me how do we I, know like, this if this I is you and if I hadn't button. gone uh, to a uh, very small acting school for two years that I flamed out of and moved home from in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I don't think I would have been able to pull that off. <laughs> I lost myself in the character, and I'm gonna be honest, you guys just look like a bunch of zeros and ones to me. <laughs> oh man, that is just that is... descending green. <laughs> <laughs> alphanumeric characters everywhere I looked. It was super weird, but I didn't I didn't feel happy, but I didn't feel sad either. Felt very logical. Oh, so just just to wrap up, this is also there's not a lot of firm legal grounding for like who can own chat bots, whether you or your heirs can opt out of having them. Uh Kevin. Yes. I don't I don't think you understand the story you just read, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the difference between... Okay, I see what's happened. Is Kevin got real confused by that story of the woman dog-walking her guy. And yeah. she's, he's confused about the difference between people and dogs. Right. I understand. Right. Uh, so there's this thing called the, the AKC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they the regulate... American, the American Kennel Club. Yes, the American Kennel Club or consortium or corporation. Uh, 
any of those words. But they, the they, American they, Kennel Cabal. <laughs> the American Kennel Cabal. <laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> run by Democrats. It's run by George Soros <laughs> and Hillary Clinton. Yep. And they feed the dogs <laughs> babies. Mm-hmm. Human mm-hmm. babies. Right. <laughs> but but just the human baby brains, so they have to get even more babies to feed mm-hmm. the dogs. That's how mm-hmm. they that's how they say they're pure. On that note, I think that wraps up another week of the International News Service with Kevin and Mike and our special guest Brian. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.